Good morning. This is Father Nico Montalbeni from St. Luke's in Toronto. Our opening hymn is Lo God is Here, Let Us Adore. A reading from the second book of Kings. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gigal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know, keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. But if not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in front of a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. It's quite a scene, isn't it? Elisha waits for Elijah to be taken, and yet he definitely is not at peace with this. When he's confronted by other prophets to tell him the news of what's about to come, he doesn't really berate them, but he certainly wants them to keep silent and not mention it to him. He's got a lot on his mind, and this is often a situation we find ourselves in. We often find ourselves in situations where we know people may mean well, but 
we don't always respond in the most positive ways. And this is because we have so much on our mind. And when we have a lot on our mind, it definitely limits our ability to be charitable. It limits our ability to basically assume the best of others. We don't really know what Elisha is assuming from the prophets who keep telling him the same thing over and over and over again. But at some level, he probably recognizes that they're trying to do something good. On the other hand, this is not what he needs right now. He is in a place of deep pondering because Elijah, who essentially has been the one he's been following, is going to be leaving and he will be in his place. It's not an enviable task. It's not an enviable position to be in, but so often we're put in these stressful positions and how we act in them is almost as important as the things we do with these situations. It's easy for us to do the right thing, but to be jerks about it. It's easy for us to do the right thing and essentially berate other people. It's much more difficult and perhaps much more Christian for us to do the right thing, but also try to be charitable about people trying to share information with us that we don't really need, we haven't asked for, and we already know. Sometimes part of charity is knowing that we're doing this for relationships. We're doing this to be good people. We're able to listen to something that we don't want to hear at a time when we're very busy with a lot of things which need to get done. Elisha certainly could have done this better, much better, but he could have also done it much worse. So we definitely have to give him some credit. It was a major event in his life, uh, a transition of sorts. Elijah leaves this world for the next, and Elisha must carry on without him. All of us, when we are going through stressful transitions, need to remember the importance of how we treat other people. Sometimes they're telling us things just to get on our case, but quite often they're telling us because they think the information could be useful, even though we already know it. They think that they're being supportive, even though we don't feel that way. So we really need to remember how we interact with people during times of stress is almost as important as how we act, the things we do during those times. Amen. I invite you to pray the Collect of the Day with me, followed by the Our Father. Almighty God, on this holy mount, you have revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the darkness of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as in heaven, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 169, Jesus on the Mountain Peak.
already.